though. Let's hear from celebrity lawyer Nick Freeman. He's courted controversy this week by saying that even hands-free kits should be banned behind the wheel. Speaking at a charity lunch, the lawyer known as Mr Loophole has said everyone thinks that if you're using a phone and you're hands-free, then you're fine and dandy. But speaking on a mobile phone is a major cause of distraction, irrespective of whether the call is hands-free or not. Well, we'll hear from Nick himself, and I'm very keen to hear your thoughts on this. Do you think he's right that even hands-free phones should be banned behind the wheel? Do you think he's talking absolute sense, or is this a step too far? Let's find out, because Nick Freeman joins us now. Good morning to you, Nick. Morning, Jonathan. Morning. So we all know that um, handheld mobile phones have been banned, although, of course, we still see people, unfortunately, using them all the time. But they've been banned since 2003. Why do you want to see hands-free kits banned as well? Well, The the difficulty is the level of distraction. And the level of distraction, whether you're handheld or hands-free, is exactly the same. There's no difference whatsoever. So if the mischief that we're trying to remedy is make our roads safer... It seems totally incongruous and hypocritical to say, well, we're going to allow you to use your phones as long as they're hands-free, but if you hold them in your hand, acknowledging that's exactly the same degree of danger, we're going to say that's all right. And, of course, it isn't all right, because if you were involved in any sort of incident, the fact that you were legally using your your phone becomes illegal, it's an aggravating feature, and you can end up being charged with a very serious matter. Um, and people people think, well, I'm using my phone legally in, in accordance with the legislation, so I'm safe. And that lulls people into a, a false sense of security. Um, as I say, if there is an incident, then that legal use immediately becomes illegal. And the point is this, Jonathan, the, the, there's been a lot of research on this. It, it's not it's not what I say about it, although I'm, I'm sure if you've been driving on the, on the motorway and you've been involved in a call and you've been using that phone legally, You've probably spent the last 20 months thinking, goodness me, I've been concentrating on that conversation. I can't tell you anything about the journey at all because you've been concentrating on the call. Um, And what what we need to do is to remove all use of phones unless it's for an emergency. And obviously the manufacturers would have to play a huge part here. Um, But but isn't that sense of... If we don't, Jonathan, it equates to the same level the same level of distraction as drinking and driving, which is illegal, um, and there is no difference whatsoever. But, you, I mean, you're describing that sense of autopilot that we've all had mm. in a car, yeah. but there are all kinds of things, surely, that can can create a similar kind of sensation. I mean, if you've got lots of things on your mind, for example, if you've just had a row with someone or a difficult conversation and you're, you're mulling it all over in the car on your way home, and again, you may well get to a point where you think, gosh, I don't actually remember any of the last 10 minutes of this journey because I was thinking so much about that. But but you, you a good, experienced driver, you can drive on autopilot anyway because you, without realising, you're making all of your observations and you're still looking around on the car, as well as maybe thinking about something else. Well, I, that, that all may, everything you say makes absolute sense. Well, when you're driving at the legal limit, as far as alcohol is concerned, the chances of you having an accident increase fourfold. When you're using a phone, um, hands, hand held phone, the chances of you having an accident increase fourfold. When you're driving with your phone in a, a legal position, the chances of you having an accident increase fourfold. Um, so, yes, if your mind is preoccupied with other things and you, you think, I'm actually not fit to drive, you shouldn't drive. Because if you're involved in an accident, you will be interviewed by the police and you'll be asked, what were you doing in the car? What were you thinking about? Were you eating? Have you had a row with somebody? Were you not feeling well? You'll be all, asked all sorts of very probative questions to try and discover whether there was an element of distraction there. And if the police conclude, actually, you've just had a row with your wife or your partner, and uh, that's consumed your mental process, you shouldn't have actually got in that car. And that can elevate the status of your driving into a very much more serious one. Of course, we, 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 have, to, we have to live life. And I'm not suggesting we cut off our brain, but what I am suggesting is we cut off our mobile phones because it's something that would be easily... It's, it's easily done, it's easily achieved, and it will make our roads a lot safer. But I thought one we have of a the... situation you, you, you alluded to earlier on. We're, we're talking about people who are, at the moment, banned from illegal use of a phone. It makes not the slightest of difference. There's no police on the roads. You see hundreds of people every day illegally using their phones. Mm. 
we need to create a social stigma because it is extremely dangerous and, and the public have not, the motorists have not grasped the point yet. I thought and one I of the reasons it, why it was more dangerous to use a handheld phone is, is the very fact that physically you've got one hand that's not on the steering wheel or in control of potentially the, the gear knob when you're driving the car. And if you've got a hands-free kit where you don't have to take your hands off the wheel at all, that automatically means that it's safer for you to have a phone conversation than holding the phone to your ear. Well, there is an element of truth in that, but all I can tell you is this is what the research shows, and that it's it's the mental involvement as opposed to the physical involvement that actually causes the distraction. It's not the fact that you're driving with one hand on the steering wheel, because if you need to, to suddenly put two hands on the steering wheel, you'd drop your phone and you'd use two hands. That would happen very quickly. It, it's the mental process which causes the problem. It's that lack of concentration, that lack of awareness. So you're driving in the middle lane and you want to overtake a vehicle and you're involved in a conversation, a, a legal conversation, but you're consumed by it and you don't properly check your mirror, you don't check the offside lanes clear and you pull out into the path of another vehicle. It's not the fact that you're simply using one hand on the steering steering wheel. Can I put a question to you? Can I put a question to you that a number of people are texting me in with? Um, Does Nick Freeman, a man in his position and occupation, can he honestly say that he never uses a hands-free kit in his car? No, completely the contrary. I hold my hands up and I I use it. I I try and use it sparingly because I try and use it in appropriate circumstances, for example, in slow-moving traffic. Because I'm all too aware, I see people on a daily basis who are legally using their phones and a drunk steps out in front of them, they they cause that drunk serious injury, they're on the phone and the police are going to interrogate the phone. So the answer to to those questions is, of course, I do and I would stop immediately the moment the government introduces legislation to outlaw it. But isn't the reason you do it because it's it's sometimes necessary and we live in a world now where many people's jobs involve them driving around and during that that driving experience during that driving time taking calls is quite important albeit hands free. Well I agree Jonathan I often get in my phone, in, into my car with lots of calls to do and I save the calls um, thinking, well, I'm going to drive to London, um, I'll sit in the near side lane, I'll drive fairly slowly because I know I'm going to be on my phone and I'm going to try and concentrate on my driving. As I say, I, I, I'm probably one of the worst culprits, but I'm acutely aware while I'm doing it of the potential problems, and I think many motorists aren't. That doesn't in any way make it right for me to do so. And yes, I would stop instantly in the same way that I'm not tempted to illegally use the phone in the car at the moment. Um, It's rather, you know, there are so many distractions in a car you've alluded to. For example, you you eat a sandwich, um, you you unbottle a drink, you you open a drink, or you you change your route on your sat nav. Mm. Um, There there are a multitude of distractions, but this this is something that has been proven to increase the chances of having an accident by four times. Now, that, in my view, that's a massive amount. And we've got to ask ourselves as a, a society that wants to create safer road space, safer driving, do we really want to undertake that risk? Or has the time come for, our, for us actually to tackle the problem seriously rather than just but tinkering you, with it? You know, and I know you and I have spoken so many times over the years about various laws that are ridiculous or laws that the public don't seem to have any respect for is there not a risk that this kind of law people wouldn't respect because if you think about it there will be people listening to our conversation now on a car radio and they're concentrating on what you're saying they're interested in what you're saying and they're not looking at the road well they are looking at the road ahead but they're not necessarily making a conscious um, concentrated effort to look at the road ahead it's just something that's happening naturally while they're listening to the radio there are also people who are suggesting that the natural conclusion to this is that you take all of the other car seats out so that you can't carry any passengers because if they talk to you there might be a period of time where you're not concentrating as much as you would do otherwise if you were in the car on your own and there has to be a sense of a reasonable limit to the law and when things start to just go a bit too far. I, I agree completely, Jonathan. We have to be proportionate and we have to be reasonable. Uh, and uh, I think driving in a situation where, the, where research has shown us that we're four times more likely to have an accident, I think it's a perfectly reasonable 
and responsible response to say, actually, that habit should be banned. In the same way that we've banned, we've, we've, we have a, a drink driving limit, which is the highest in, of any EU country at the moment. Uh, and uh, again, the chances of you having an accident increase fourfold. The rest of the EU, barring one other country, has reduced the level to a sensible level. We haven't here. Does it make it right? No, it doesn't. And in my view, we should reduce it because it's wrong to send out, to give anyone a green light, say, yes, get in your car and drive, and we acknowledge you're four times more likely to have an accident because you're at that level of consumption or you're at that level of distraction with a handheld or hands-free phone. To me, that is wrong. It's dangerous. And we will reduce our accidents. And if people aren't interested in that, and if the government isn't interested in that, then let's carry on. But it seems totally hypocritical to outlaw one type of using a mobile phone, which is no more or no less dangerous than the other. But if, if... the public don't have an appetite for it, and if the government don't, and I appreciate it's not a vote winner, all I'm doing is pointing out the obvious, and I appreciate people don't like it. I use my phone as well. Um, it will be a huge inconvenience to me, but it will make the road safer. So we have to make a decision as a society, don't we? Nick, always good talking to you. Thank you so much for your time. Nick.